The Cadet Training Centre at Waterbeach is the headquarters of Cambridgeshire Army Cadet Force and the training area beyond it is used by our cadets for exercises and sporting events. During the Second World War this entire site was part of RAF Waterbeach and later it was a Royal Engineers Barracks and Training Ground. Many surviving structures from the old airfield can still be seen today. Opened in 1941, the airfield was operated by Bomber Command and air crews flew from here to attack targets in Germany and the occupied territories. 122 aircraft, with most of their crews, did not return. I went to meet the chairman of Waterbeach Military Heritage Museum, Adrian Wright, to find out more. We're right in the middle of Waterbeach Airfield, which uh, was occupied first of all by the RAF from 1941 onwards to 1966, and then by the Royal Engineers to 2000, 2012. Obviously this is a, it's a very long runway because some very, very heavy bombers would come down here, Lancasters, Wellingtons, Stirlings, and they need a long runway. Dakotas and, and Lancaster did a lot of work with uh, dropping food supplies into Europe uh, after the war. And then the jets came and it was, it, it was extended a bit and so we had the jets um, thundering down this runway, um, going towards um, the spire of the church at Lambeach, just, just right at the end of the runway and almost into the uh, cadets um, building as well. So there were eight raids on the airfield, the first one in 1940. There were five raids in 1941. In February 41, one, one plane dropped eight high-explosive bombs, Junkers uh, 88C. It's, it's thought that it, that plane was shot down by 7th Squadron by Stirling uh, over at Dry Drayton. So that one did not get away. But lots of other raids, there was lots of incendiaries dropped, there was lots of um, high-explosive bombs trying to blow up the, air, the, the infrastructure, the, the buildings, the hangars and of course damaged the runway so they couldn't get the planes off the ground. But, uh, obviously a lot of bombs missed their targets but a lot, did a lot of damage and one of them unfortunately um, hit some buildings here and the, there was one casualty. We're at Waterbeach uh, Barracks Memorial Garden in 2009. A number of memorials in here, ashes of people who were uh, died, um, quite a few from 514 Squadron and one or two other people as well. But it's not just for the one squadron, it's for anybody connected with Waterbridge Station who wants to be, come back home as it were. And it's a wonderful, tranquil place. It's a all part of the past story of Waterbridge and its airfield. The site is currently being redeveloped by Urban and Civic, who will build hundreds of new homes, shops and other amenities on the former airfield. Urban and Civic are committed to fully honouring the site's history and heritage, preserving many of its buildings and maintaining the memorial gardens and the museum. Waterbeach Military Heritage Museum, which is open by appointment only, is located on the south east edge of the airfield. It records the names and faces of many of the lost aircrewmen, as well as many artefacts including flying equipment, medals and documents. The museum also covers the airfield's use by the Royal Engineers, who took over from the RAF in 1966. I asked Royal Engineers veteran Mike Barry to tell me more about this period in the site's history. When the engineers take over a barracks, they want a training activity, a training facility. We built, uh, you got the runway, so we use the runway for repair 
and that's one of the things the engineer does, the engineers do, is repair runways. And we've got two perfect ones here. We blow a hole in the runway itself and then we repair it by whatever facility there is around at the time. We also do watermanship. We built the lake which is on the on here. And what we did there, for those of you who um, drive down the A10, um, your forest, you'll see a bund, which is a, a sloped bit of ground, where all the stuff from the lake were placed on there. And the object behind that was to, to prevent traffic light, traffic lights from penetrating that night exercise. My job as Q Masai, Quartermaster Sergeant Instructor, is combat engineering. The sappers here needed to be informed of their role as an engineer. And that would include mine laying, mine clearing, demolitions, building roads, building bridges, demolishing roads, demolishing bridges. We as engineers will always be the first in and the last out, purely because you will find that if in a war there'll be mines, so we'll be clearing the minefield. There'll be obstacles that need to be overcome. So I've actually blown up a mortar which was fired. It landed quite happily, but it didn't explode. So my role then was to fill up sandbags, put it around it, put a char put a detonator and a little bit of plastic explosive uh, and set it off and then got rid of it. When I was in Oman, which has now come back into the uh, into the news again, my job was to mark out a minefield which was 45 kilometers long. Okay, now it had already been mapped, but things change. And so my role was to walk through the minefield and establish what was available, what was still there and the condition. And uh, for some reason, they gave me a military medal for doing it. 